Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of our pod- kite podcast. And if I'm sitting in the same t-shirt, it's not because I have only one t-shirt, but because um, <laughs> I have many of them and I just changed them. It's the same color. I like black. Uh, today we're still in Mexico, and I'm with Bilge yeah. from Turkey. Many of you guys know her. She's uh, she's been riding for a while. Yeah. She's visiting a bunch of international events. She's uh, she's an amazing woman. She's got her own kite um, kite school kite station in Turkey, yes. and she's one of the I would say leading girls and just the, the leader of the kiteboarding hydrofoil movement in Turkey. Thank you. Bilge, what's yeah. up? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, this is the second season of the podcast. We started last year, yeah. and this year we're trying to do it every every week, and we're trying to capture as many people as possible mm-hmm. who can give some insights into kite surfing, provide, provide some entertainment, and at the same time educate them and overall how th- how the things are going. Because you know, yeah. we we are as as professional athletes. We are who are constantly in in the um, in the mix of competition and traveling all over the world. We may know many things, and I, I, I really would like to share them with the world and the people yeah. who don't travel as much or do not compete, but still want to be filled with the information. It's true, still we, we share lots of stories in common yes. because we, we've been to many events together. Exactly. But at the same time, each of us have uh, our own stories. So yes. that could be a little bit, I don't know, interesting or different yes. for other people to hear, to share okay. maybe. Yeah. I think we should start because we're in Leventana yeah. and it's, it's as, as we, we talk with Xantis, this is the best place it's, it's mm-hmm. for the winter training. It's really amazing. It's, it's, it's warm, it's windy. And you've been here not once and not twice. How many yeah. times have you been in London? This is my second time. Second year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Second year. Uh, well, actually, it's perfect for me because, okay. like, um, our season starts in April mm-hmm. and until mid-November. Mm-hmm. Then um, our season ends. Uh, winter time is not possible to ride there okay. because uh, the wind changes. We don't have the wind that much because it's like the thermal wind um, in Akiaka, in uh-huh. my home spot. So it's gr- good to travel somewhere warm, somewhere with plenty of wind and of course with uh, friends all around okay. the world. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a very good opportunity. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the, this year I was a little bit late coming here mm-hmm. um, because of some personal issues okay. and that's why but um, I'm a little bit late to train okay <laughs> but we'll see if I can catch up are you going to compete in hydrofoil tour this year in Mexico this this Thursday yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. for sure for sure last year it was like a surprise for me because I was here after after 10 okay okay it's, Tell me it so. has been like 10 years that I haven't been on a holiday and okay. last that this for last year and I said okay I'm gonna go somewhere like warm and I just kite on my own and I will not think anything else okay and I came here okay and I said oh hydrofill pro tour okay another competition yeah okay so, you know it's fun to compete but mm-hmm. it's at the same time it's kind of responsibility oh, yeah definitely it's stressful yeah because because as you I think I think the thing is even if you if you train for yourself no matter what your level is you don't want to be like you don't want to fail. You want to do your yeah. best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least you have to. Um, you want to feel uh, good about yourself. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't matter uh, your level. I mean, you, your goal can be just finishing the course, okay. or your goal can be being in the first uh, three, top uh-huh. ten, top five. It doesn't matter. But uh, it's important that you you could still be uh, pleased with yourself. Do do, yes. do you like competition in general? Yes, but I don't know why. Okay. Why I like okay. it, I don't know. Because it's been so many years. You know, we were on yeah, course yeah, race boards yeah, before. Race boards yeah, before, yeah. Like 2015, I think, 14, oh, a long time ago. No, yeah, the last one was in uh, Turkey, actually. In, uh, I remember the, the, Euro- the European as well. The, the European uh, Championship? Yes, yes. The, Turkey? It was the like race 15, boards. yes. Uh, no, no. I, 2015. Long time ago, yeah. yeah long yeah. time ago. The last one. Um, so, you basically this one where you came here and then you said the, the season starts in April in, in Gyokova, yeah. Akiaki. And I don't know for a fact that Gyokova, uh, when I was doing freestyle, it's in, and I was training on my own, it's an amazing place. And as, as I understand, there's basically, there's a valley, there's the beach, and there's two set of mountains. Mm-hmm. And every day, 
as I remember, as it just just the clock um, shows 12 o'clock, the thermal wind just starts. Even before, like before. half past 10, 11, yeah. as if somebody is just turning off on the fan. Yeah, every the day. Big fan every is, day. Yeah, every day until the sun goes down. And I remember that when, when I was there, I think a couple of four years ago, mm -hmm. you didn't have a kite station there, but now you have, right? The kite station. Yeah. Tell us, tell us more about it. Yeah, actually, it's like a bay only for kite, kite boards. Yes. Just for kite board schools. And that time when you came, it was like eight or nine. Mm -hmm. um, but they were like smaller and there was no uh, neat construction. I think. Mm -hmm. But uh, three years ago, now it's, it will be fourth year. Okay. Um, there was the guy changed uh, the owner of the okay. bay. Okay. Yeah, now it's a private beach mm -hmm. and we have more opportunities. Like, um, and also we have better sponsors mm -hmm. because it's like, yeah, of course we love the sports, but at the same time it's a kind of business. Okay, yeah. it's, it's very growing in Turkey. Mm -hmm. And for example, my sponsor is Mercedes-Benz, okay. but there are two other uh, global car sponsors at the beach and uh, another bank. So, mm -hmm. um, the I mean, the big firms and like the brands are really interested in kiteboarding as okay. well. Yeah. What's the, what's the name of your kite school? Kite Mercedes by B. Gözturk. It's like okay. uh, Kite Mercedes uh, plus my name and surname. Okay. If if they want to find this this kite station, what should what should they Google? They they can Google like Kite Mercedes, like as Mercedes Benz, uh -huh. and or they can just write Gökova. Do you have a website? Aptica. Yeah, it's. Uh, We're gonna put it here. What's what's yeah, the website? Yeah, www. Kite Mercedes by B. Gözturk. Com. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. See and. What's 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 the conditions like for for foiling? Oh, it's perfect. In, in it's perfect. perfect. Okay. I've seen a couple of videos. The water is always flat. Mm -hmm. Which kites? Because I've never foiled there. Which kites do you, would you, you would I would I use in in summer? Okay. Uh, let's say in the morning mm -hmm. when just starting, you can go out with thirteen maybe. Mm -hmm. um, then afterwards, you definitely switch to eleven and nine maybe, mm -hmm. and then in the evening again. And sometimes even. For example, other people say, oh, there's no wind, not enough wind, whatever. Yeah. But for foilers, always, 100%, every day we have wind. Yeah. Nice. Yes. So you, 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 having, you practically have 30 days, 30 kiteable days in a month. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Yes, yes. Um, and it's like, um, the water is mostly flat. Mm -hmm. I mean, until 12 uh, o'clock, until 1, it's really flat. And then it's a little bit choppy, but uh, not wavy at all. Okay. The thing is, it would be a great place for the beginners then. Sure. For summer, because it's flat yeah. board, it's 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 not like the crazy crazy conditions, with super strong wind and big no, waves. So no, it's no, no. it's it's really um, mellow. Yes. And the people can just really learn. good for beginners, both uh, twin tip and for kite. Okay, yeah. And also, like, um, if it's very good place uh, to be progressed. Okay. And um, you said that. In Turkey, the the movement of kiteboarding is developing mm -hmm. enormously. Do you have any? Because we now uh, finally confirmed for the Olympic Games. Yeah. Do you have any? I would say upcoming um, generations who's interested in in participating in hydrofoiling racing. Yes, it's new actually, but um, yeah, yeah, because like it, it's it's our future, you know, mm -hmm. it's for sure. So, uh, but the, the new generation should see how we do it, mm -hmm. how foilers do it. So I think it's important to have some uh, kind of competitions there as well. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, last year I did like uh, Turkish nationals, okay. one leg of Turkish nationals there. Mm -hmm. And it was huge. Yeah, okay. Even, uh, yeah, in Akyaka, yeah, nice. even okay. after that competition, like the new generation was so eager and they were so excited about it. Mm -hmm. Then they started. Actually, two years ago, another uh, girl, she, She's like 12 years old right now, but she's uh, third in nationals. Okay. Uh, and there's another girl. She's nine, and she's so eager. You 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 know the con conditions in Kilios. You remember those conditions, the wild conditions. Yeah, yeah. Okay. In Istanbul. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Istanbul, yeah. Even in Tough. those conditions, she was fierce to go out. Uh -huh. So uh, it makes me really excited to see new generation also is excited mm -hmm. in th those kind of things. Um, last year and the previous year, uh, we had um, world championship, but it's like a freestyle. 
Mm -hmm. The elite league was there. Okay. And of course, freestyle is different. I mean, uh, when you watch yeah. it, it's, it's good for spectators because it's close to the beach. And the, the biggest problem with freestyle is that you need a lot of wind, and it's it's we, it's really it's most of the times the, the competition is really unreliable. It's you can really miss the whole event just because there's not enough wind. It's true. And it with, happened. And with the it, it it's happened so many times. Mm -hmm. Um, in every single year, you, you go to freestyle competition, and yeah. the biggest problem all the time is the wind. And then I think when the foil comes in, is that there's pretty much no way you cannot know you cannot make the event happen because we need five knots, six knots, yeah. and boom, you you're falling out there with the big kites, yes. and it's easy yes. done. It's it's just the, the the way that you can confirm the event almost hundred percent is going to happen. Yes. It's an amazing thing, yeah. and that's, it's also it's it's more real, reliable for for the racers as well because you know you pay money, you come to the event and you want to compete, then boom, you're sitting on the yeah. doing nothing in the beach, and then for the foiling though, if you come, you know you're gonna be racing. Especially talking about uh, Gyokova, Akeka. Yeah, always um, okay. Hundred percent. Mm. Yeah, there should be something really like really really uh, extraordinary to happen yeah. that not to have a competition. Yes, yeah. like nearly hundred yeah. percent, there will be a competition. Definitely. No matter what, that's why uh, we're thinking about having another another competition there because yeah, which one? you know while we're talking about it right mm -hmm. now, uh, Europeans maybe mm -hmm. or maybe a gold cup. Okay, so yeah. it should be in late September maybe mm -hmm. or October. It could be. It depends on if the, uh, there will be another European sh uh, Championship before. Okay. If not, we are thinking about it. So, do yeah. do, you, do you want to make um so? It, does it mean both European Championship or Gold Cup both in the in the, in the fall? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we don't have uh, any other time to do it before. Okay. And how is the wind in the fall? Perfect. Still. Okay. Yeah. So Un until mid November. Uh -huh. It's always windy. Okay. I mean, for foilers, yes, it's always windy. Okay. But maybe um, the first year they had this uh, freestyle uh, championship in October. Still, mm -hmm. it was a goal. Mm -hmm. And Last year it was in September, so okay. it was perfect and yeah. Okay, so but for us, hundred percent. So you, as I understand, you kind of the willpower to in, in Turkey to to make this events because you you basically made the, the the nationals last year and you're pushing to have a gold cup and yeah. Europeans this year. Plans for the next Hopefully. year? Yeah, um, we'll see. Let's, okay. let's go through this um, one. What about competition? How many are, are, do, you, do you plan to compete throughout the summer or mostly work? Mm, well, it's our high season, to yeah. tell the truth. But for example, um, at the end of April, mm -hmm. we have the World Championship. World Championship. I, for sure, I'll go there. Okay, nice. And after that one, we'll see. Um, I will This year, I will try to keep up with it. Okay. With all of them, hopefully. Okay, okay. Yeah. Do you know if we're going to be seeing in, in this season's 2019 summer, are we going to be seeing any. Um, We'll say girls and new boys from Turkey competing for this or season, unlikely, okay. but for 2020, maybe. Yeah. Okay, so they yes. kind of they what's the average age of the right now? The, the Turkish team, we'll say you say, mm, okay, you know, uh, me, yes. army, and yes. EJ, mm -hmm. uh, apart than us, they're on uh, the new ones, like the, the new the ones, like generation. they are 12 and 9, okay, yes, yeah, they're so, so young, still needs to be like yeah. two, four years before they can, yeah, really I, I guess so. I know there's another guy, uh, he's very talented mm -hmm. and he's uh, around 15 or 16, mm -hmm. he's coming. Nice. Yes. Yes. Okay. And this is the part I know you've been waiting for. <laughs> You're very excited. And it's a blitz <laughs> question. Yay! <laughs> Santos really liked his one last time. Mm -hmm. And I have the whole set of new one. They're really simple. You, I'm asking questions, they're completely random. You try to answer okay. them as well as possible. We'll see. You're supposed to get a prize, but. Prize. Okay, yeah, what but kind of prize? this is the thing. I I don't have a prize. I didn't think about it. What kind of prize it can be? So there is no prize, but then it's fun. Okay. The first one. What would be your autobiography be called? Bio. Bio. Okay. <laughs> nice, nice bio. Um, sweet or sour? Uh, sour. Sour. Why? Why not sweet? I don't like sweet things. I don't know. I told you, I guess I told you, I don't even like chocolate. Okay, don't kill me. I really don't like <laughs> <laughs> We don't like chocolate. Mm, what about the Kinder Surprise? Uh, small no. one? 
No. Maybe okay. it could be like very dark chocolate. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's it's, it's not gonna be sweet. It's gonna be bitter. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Um, if you had to give up either brushing your teeth <gasps> every day or hair. Hair, definitely. No hair. Okay. Would you shave it off completely after some time? Because you no, know, it's gonna be it's gonna be all clogged up like a dreadlocks. Would you would you would you shave your? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of there. <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> okay. Do you believe in Bigfoot? Bigfoot? Uh, yeah. Uh, I believe in many things. Bigfoot is one of them. I believe in aliens. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, why is it tennis ball? Um, fuzzy. What? Fuzzy, like you know, it's it's hairy. The tennis ah. ball. Why is it? Why is it fuzzy? I think because they are playing in different grounds. That's why. Okay. I, yeah. I have no idea actually why. It's. Um, do you like movies? Yes. Do, have, yeah. you, have you seen well, Lord of the Rings? Yeah, I did. Okay, okay. <laughs> Would you rather be a hobbit or an elf for a day? Of course, elf. This is a oh, very easy question. No is hobbit, that, right? Is that anyone saying I, I would like to be a hobbit? I don't know. Uh, I've never asked anyone this question before. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I probably would be a hobbit. I, really? I don't, yeah, elf is like, uh, but then the hobbit like short and big, 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 big feet. And you know what yeah. they say? Right? If you have a big feet. Yeah, I know that. Have big socks, <laughs> but right? that's, that goes for men. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Let's continue. Um, have you ever caught something on fire while cooking? Mm, no. Do you cook? Yeah, I cook. cook. I like I like cooking very much. Okay, I, I like yes. too sometimes. Yeah. Also, we have a restaurant in Akeka. Which one? I know there are a bunch of restaurants. No, you haven't been there yet. Kebab? I like kebab. No, no it's a meat restaurant. I, actually, we have uh, Mexican specialties. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, sometimes we go in the kitchen and we cook. Okay. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Is hot dog a sandwich? Yes. Yes, it's a hot sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, how many chickens would it take to kill an elephant? <clears throat> okay, I I don't think there are enough chickens on earth to kill an elephant because of the, <laughs> their thick, very thick skin, but yeah. <laughs> okay. What is the weirdest thing you've ever seen at someone's home? Oh, this is a good one. Yeah. But I cannot remember. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, well, I think, I think, um... This is a very good question, actually. Yeah. What, what's yours? My ones? No. Have you ever seen something very weird in someone else's? Ah, uh, I don't know. The most weird thing I've seen, I think, maybe I... I, I mean, besides the place being really, really dirty, I've never really seen... Oh yeah, I've seen once I was in, in, in Moscow in Russia and I, I walked to the guy's house yeah. and he was a hunter and I've never yeah. seen but he had really really heads of animals on the wall. Um, oh that's what's like wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um What's your favorite dance move? Dance at move at the club. Oh okay, you know I'm Turkish. Yeah. You know our roots. And we like to dance and okay. we like to move our hips. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and like this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, and finally. This one is important. Okay. And I'm I, all ears. So please pay attention. What do you think cats dream about? Cats? Yes. Well, cats. well I think they are not dreaming, they are planning. Planning, okay, yes. okay. Yes, and they're planning how to uh, how to rule their human. Okay. More, I mean, dogs are planning to some of them, like mine. Okay. He's so too clever. I mean, he's maybe more clever than an average person. Really? <laughs> yes. Okay. And he's planning all his moves. Okay. Like he can, for example, he can do anything. To get people's uh, sympathize, for example, okay. he can do like limping or whatever. Mm -hmm. But cats, they have their own way. Mm -hmm. I'm not a cat person in general, but my sister has cats, and okay. I know they are clever. They know what they are doing, and they don't care at all. That was so. that was funny. Yeah, really. It's a simple question, but I always <laughs> people people start to really use their um, philosophic mind to <laughs> to think about. What cats dream about? <laughs> Do you, and then, um, 
Damn, I just had a question in my head. I want to ask. Oh, are you a cat or a dog person? Dog in general. Dog. I mean, yeah, yeah, I love all animals okay. in general, but um, not. I cannot say dog or a cat. Uh, usually, um, do you have dog? Yeah, yeah. Do you I have, have cat? No. So you yeah, dog are you yeah. here? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I think it's been a great time talking to you. Thank you. And um, so there's a camera. <laughs> Hi, Alexei. There's uh, just, you know, just tell something to the people who mm -hmm. are watching us. It can be an inspirational thought or it can be wishing them a happy birthday or anything. Just <laughs> really anything. Just say okay. what you think it's, it's important right okay. now. Okay, thank you. Thanks for watching us, uh, first of all. And uh, Akeka Gyokova is a great place and I really would like to welcome you all and it would be a great to have a competition there and see you as guests and I promise you lots of drinks. Come on, go! <laughs> oh! <laughs> yes, thank you very much Birgit. Guys, see you next week. We'll try to be up every Wednesday. So, all her links gonna be in the description for the kite station for the Gyokova place. I know from my personal basis, from my per, from my personal experience, it's an amazing place. Just you know, thank you for watching, and we're happy to do it. Bye. Bye. Great.